With the 4.25 release of Unreal, the Niagara particle system is now fully supported and classed as development ready. For that reason, I used the recent Unreal Spring Jam as an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the new system by converting a bunch of my existing Cascade particle systems into Niagara. So in this video, I'll be covering the process of creating this stylized flame particle. The version on the right is my old Cascade system, and the version on the left is the new Niagara system that we'll be creating. So to begin this process, we'll need a sphere mesh, as this will be a mesh rendering particle system. So I'm in Blender. You can do this in a package of your choice, but uh, I'll be providing the specific Blender setup. So inside of the editor, we're just going to press Shift and A and select to create a new icosphere for a slightly more low poly stylized look. I'm going to set the scale to somewhere around 0.2 so that the sphere will be between 30 to 40 centimeters in Unreal. This is important as the forces and the time scaling of this particle system in Unreal will be based on the object size. So using something much smaller than this or much larger may give you some unexpected results. Next, I'll add a decimate modifier to the icosphere. This step isn't absolutely required, but it will add some random kind of aspects to the silhouette of the individual particles. Finally, we need to press Ctrl in A and select Transform to reset the scale rotation and location of the sphere ready for exporting. So I've just exported mine to the desktop, named it SM underscore sphere, and with the mesh ready, we just need to head over to our Unreal project. So for this, I'm using a blank project with no starter material, I've created a simple grid material for the floor and a dark background just to show the results a little bit easier in recording. Also go ahead and create a new folder named Meshes and find where you exported your sphere and import that into the project. For the import settings, just disable the option to create a new material as we'll be making our own in a moment. And then in a folder named Materials, I'm just going to create a new material named M underscore particle base. Now this would be a nice simple material. We want to select either the M underscore particle base node or click anywhere in the graph. Then under the material options, set this to be additive for the blend mode and set the shading model to be unlit. We're then going to search for the particle color node and pass that into the emissive color. And in case you're not familiar with the particle system in Unreal, this is very similar to a vector color that you might see in a standard kind of material that you make, but this will allow us to override the color in our particle emitter rather than requiring us to do any of that in code or through material instances. With that said, we will still need a material instance, so go back in and select the material that we've just created. Make sure you saved and compile that, of course. With the new material selected though, right click on this and select create material instance. Now I've gone ahead and created a new folder named effects and the first thing we need is an emitter. So Niagara has a really nice system which allows you to very easily create a bunch of separated emitters and then combine these into a single particle system. You do of course have the option to make everything in a single system and by the end of this we'll have a slightly better understanding of what an emitter and a system is, but just kind of follow along for now. Um, but if you were to do everything in a single system, it just means that this is going to be slightly less reusable. So to start, we're going to create an emitter. And to begin, you get the option to use a default template. And you can start with something that best suits the particle you're aiming to create. So for example, the flame in this tutorial kind of resembles the fountain that we get that we can see just here. And this will give us the basics of things like upward force, the spawn count, and some other things that we'd other otherwise need to implement ourselves. So let's select that option and I'm going to name this one n underscore flame underscore em. Then inside of the emitter, there are going to be a few things that we don't need, so we can immediately remove the gravity, the drag, and the scale color. And then under the render section, we want to remove the sprite renderer and replace this with our mesh renderer. And we're just going to fill this with the sphere that we've created and press the override material option and add an array element and then select the material particle instance that we've created earlier as well. Now in my case, I just needed to wait a couple of moments for the shaders to compile uh, before it changed from the grayed out example. So if you're seeing that, don't worry. Just pause this and wait for that to do its thing. Okay, so with that done, I'm also going to change the playback range, which is down in the bottom uh, timeline you can see down here. It defaults to 10 seconds and the emitter is only two seconds in length. So I'm just gonna turn that back down to two seconds. And this will just make things a little bit easier to visualize as we go through and make our changes. So in the emitter graph now we have some really nice ways to visualize what is making up the stages of our particle. So if we select the node, you can see that we can scroll through everything in one go. 
Alternatively, you can select the specific aspects of the effect, such as what happens when the emitter spawns, what happens when the particles spawn or update, and so on. Now, we can leave a lot of these as they are by default, but under the particle spawn section, we want to remove the add velocity in cone, as we'll be controlling the velocity ourselves, so this was just sending everything out in a kind of conical shape as soon as the particles spawn. We will keep the sphere location, which is found here though, and then above this we can press the green plus button and search for the add velocity option. So to the side in the details panel this will start as a constant vector and we want to use this small drop down arrow to search for and change this to a uniform ranged vector. So this just allows us to add some variation between a minimum and a maximum range. We don't want any of the variation on the x and y uh, minimum or maximum values but we will set the minimum z to 200 and the maximum to 250. So I just realized that in the original recording, I've actually done this the wrong way around because in Cascade, uh, the minimum and maximum are displayed in the opposite order. So I just kind of defaulted to using that, but just, I will come back and fix this at the end as well. But if you're following along, make sure that the minimum is 200 and the maximum is 250, not the other way around. Okay, so next we're going to change the scale of our mesh. This will be done over time. So we place this in the particle update section and we're looking to find the scale mesh size. Again, this defaults to a constant vector, so if we increase the scale, we'll just end up with one kind of long pillar of particles. So we're gonna use the drop down option again, and we'll change this to a float by curve, and this is going to allow us to change the size of the particles over their lifespan. In the details panel on this timeline then, we can shift and click to place our first point, which I'll set to be a time of zero, so the very beginning of the particle's life, and a value of five, so five times is default size. Then we need to shift and click again and place the next point at a time of one. And I'm gonna give this a value of zero so that it is uh, scaled down to nothing before it stops existing. So two things to note here though, uh, making sure that you're creating a point and selecting all of the axes. As you can see, my first click for some reason only had the Y axis as you could see because it was green. So I've actually deleted that and then started the process again, just in case you need to do the same thing. And the second thing is that this value is normalized. So even though the particle is lasting for two seconds, uh, we're using a curve from zero to one. Uh, so one doesn't actually represent the number of seconds that this will take to take effect. This is affecting the point in its lifetime. So if this was a 10 second particle system, then one would still be the end of that 10 second lifetime. So if you wanted to affect something midway through its life, you just put this at 0.5 and add something on the curve value there. So finally, we want to control the color of the particle. And again, this will be done over the life of the particle. So we're gonna add this again on the particle update and search for color. Now this is going to give us another constant value. And in the uh, demonstration at the beginning, I showed that we're making a kind of orange to blue flames. I'm just jumping over at this point as well to the preview scene settings to select the environment options and remove the background, just so this is a little bit easier to see. Again, using the drop down and changing this from a default color to be a color from curve. But I'm just gonna set the two colors here to something uh, kind of more similar to what I had in the demonstration. And the top tabs that we can see are the ones controlling the colors and the bottom control the opacity. And just make sure that the uh, flame turns blue a little bit earlier. Uh, again, rather than using it at the normalized value of one, which is the end of the life cycle, uh, I want the blue to be a little bit more prominent partway through the life. Now at this stage things are looking a little bit off from what I've shown and that's just because I think we forgot to make some changes to the sphere location details. So I'm just going to go back and select the sphere location. We, we do want to use that as the spawning logic. But I'm just going to change the radius up to something around 50 I think looks pretty good for my preference here. So finally if we just make sure to compile, save and apply this we can also use the uh, small thumbnail button here to create an editor thumb just so that we can easily see what this emitter is when we're going through the uh, the folder structure. Now at the moment we have an emitter and these are not able or used for placement in the world. So as I mentioned at the start, they're intended to be used as part of a larger particle system. So if we right click on this, we can select to create a new Niagara system based on this emitter. Now we don't actually need to change anything in this specific system just because I've set the emitter up exactly as I wanted to show in the, in the game or in the world. However, just as 
an example so you have a slightly better understanding of what's happening. You can do things in here such as using a second emitter and we can choose to create one of those down here. We can then add some customization to the emitters too and this doesn't affect the original emitter so I've added some extra velocity and color to the second flame emitter that I've added in just to show the difference. Now ideally what you'd be doing is in a kind of more realistic fire for example have a second emitter which would be your smoke emitter and perhaps an emitter for the heat distortion. You can then place all of those together in a final kind of fire particle or Niagara would call that a fire system and the great thing about that is then if you wanted to create an explosion you've got your heat distortion emitter and you could put that into the explosion system as well so you can kind of see how flexible this new system should be for development and it, it definitely seems to have its uh, benefits over cascade so I'm just going to revert that back though now that we've done that and set up our system we can compile again give this another thumbnail just to allow us to uh, place that on the system icon and this is now going to allow us to place this in the world spawn this at runtime and all those kind of good things that you're familiar with when you were using the cascade system and there we have it so we've now got a lovely stylized flame particle so I just wanted to cover this I've not seen much in the way of tutorials on the new particle system yet besides that one specific tutorial that seems to be going around of everyone using a skeletal mesh and exploding that into particles uh, that seems a little bit specific so I wanted to create something hopefully a little bit more simplistic but hopefully this gives you an idea of how the actual components come together and you can start trying things out to create your own cool particle effects so as always, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And do remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the weekly videos I release covering a wide range of game development topics. I just wanted to say a really big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters as well. I'm seeing a big uptake at the moment of people coming over and supporting the channel there. It really does mean a great deal to me and truly helps to allow me to keep creating all of this content and trying out new things for the channel. So again, a really big thank you to everyone who's come over and supported me there. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.